Okay, so now we're going to go over some special limits at infinity that involve trig functions. So here's the first one. So limit as x approaches infinity, I can have sine or cosine in there. That limit does not exist. Now the reason why is because if you think about sine and cosine, that oscillate, they keep going up and down forever. So it's never going to actually reach a certain number. It just bounces back and forth between negative 1 and 1. So because it's never going to actually reach a number, we said that limit itself does not exist. Then we have these two special limits. Limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. Now, we have seen something similar to this before in a previous section, but remember that that sine x over x we talked about, that was x approaching zero. This is x approaching infinity, so that's why the answer is different. So if x approaches zero, sine x over x, that goes to one. But if x approaches infinity of sine x over x, that goes to zero. We also have one here for cosine as x approaches infinity. Cosine x over x equals zero. So there's some special limits that you want to be aware of. So we're going to use these now to answer a couple questions here. So let's do part A first. We're going to do the limit x approaches infinity of x minus cosine x uh, over x. So for this one, since there's one thing on the bottom, what we can do is we can break this limit up and we can write it as two separate fractions. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to do, we're going to do the limit, x approaches infinity, and I'm just going to separate each of these, divide each of them individually by x. Then I can simplify it, and we, x approaches infinity. This is 1 minus cosine x over x. So now, the reason why we wanted to do that was to create this limit by itself. So the limit does apply to each one individually. If we apply the limit to this one right here, that's going, this particular part is going to go to zero because of the property here. So, so one remains there, and then this part's going to go to zero, which means that the answer for part A is going to be one. Okay, for part B, we have limit as x approaches infinity, cosine 1 over x. So this is not going to be our special limit that we have here because the x is inside of the cosine. It's not down below like we have here. Okay, so this is, is going to be done differently than the previous example. But notice what we have going on inside here. We've already talked about these kind of limits. The limit as x approaches infinity of c over x to the n, where n is greater than 1 that one goes to zero. That's exactly what's going to happen inside here. Our limit properties say that we can apply the limit to the inside one and then that applies the limit to the outside one. So basically if we start with the inside, if we do, uh, if we just do this off to the side, the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x, we know that's going to go to zero because of that property we previously talked about. So now because we know that part goes to zero, we know that we'll end up with cosine zero. Cosine of zero is equal to one. So the answer for part B is one. Okay, so for part C, limit x approaches infinity of four over three x minus sine x. So to approach this kind of problem, we're actually gonna apply the same technique that we've previously talked about in this section. What that involves is taking everything on the top and bottom and you're dividing it by the highest power you have in the bottom. That's also going to work for this one, even though we have a sine x. The highest power we have in the bottom uh, is going to be x. So that's the first thing we want to do is divide everything top and bottom by x. So we're going to do 4 over x, and then we have 3x over x minus sine x over x. So everything top and bottom we divide by x. We do that because then we can make use of the property that we've mentioned before. Uh, where if you have a constant over x to the n, that part's going to go to zero. Now we do want to simplify this first before we do that. So we get 4 over x on top and the bottom, 3 minus sine x over x. Now, the top part, when we apply our limits to top and bottom separately, this one is going to go to zero because that property we talked about before. On the bottom we have 3. This one is also going to go to zero because that's this special limit. Limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. That goes to zero. 
So we get 0 over 3 minus 0. Final answer is going to be 0.